Welcome to Digication Scholars Conversations. I'm your host, Kelly Driscoll. In this episode, you'll hear part two of my conversation with Shamai Thacker from University of Alaska Anchorage. More links and information about today's conversation can be found on Digication's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Full episodes of Digication Scholars Conversations can be found on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. You are about to hear part two of our conversation with Shamai Thacker from University of Alaska Anchorage. Please be sure to listen to our previous episode to hear part one of this conversation. So I know one of the things that you brought up when you were creating this portfolio was, um, you know, one of the things that you hoped to do was to learn more about accepting and helping um, students and making them feel comfortable while they were in an education setting. Um, But that you also had, you know, as part of these educational experiences that you've had, learned more about some of the challenges within the community, such as alcoholism and homelessness and if this is is this something that's still a driver in your education currently it is um maybe not quite as much as it was when i first started my education a lot of that was from the early days and what i could do and and even up to my master's program and It was actually the research that I started doing in my master's degree where I, where I was focusing on e-portfolio and like uh, cr- I was creating curriculum and mm-hmm. doing design work for how course design could look for student success, like that transfer from high school to um, higher ed. But it's strange because I haven't figured out how to connect the two Mm -hmm. (laughs) and we really should be able to do that. And I don't know why in my brain that has not happened yet. Um, That said, a lot of that was also driven by my background. I have a really strong background in um, career services. Mm -hmm. I love doing resume writing and, and um, just like how we present ourselves for the job market. And I did, I actually did an internship with Goodwill Job Connections, working with a lot of homeless people that were trying to get into um, the workforce and what that meant. And then I started working with another company that was trying to start up here in in Anchorage and they actually ended up, it didn't end up working out. I'm not too sure what happened there. Um, I ended up moving on, but there was a place that was going to open that was doing exactly that. And they were servicing our homeless community, pulling them off the street, trying to give them jobs and give them general, not like it was education experiences, but it was just like how to use word processing, how to create an Excel document, you know, the general things that day to day we should know in our new life and technology. Right. Um, but I haven't drawn those connections anymore. Now, instead of focusing on the homeless community and the alcoholism, which is actually very important to me, um, the alcoholism that actually comes from my past. That's, you know, my, my biological father is an alcoholic still. Um, and so that's always been a driving consideration in like my don't mess up mm-hmm. <laughs> and here's why. Um, and then homelessness growing up in Clam Gulch and then transitioning to Anchorage was so mind blowing for me. Um, we didn't have homeless people down on the Kenai Peninsula that we saw. Mm-hmm. It's very possible we did. I grew up in rural Alaska, so it just, I, maybe I didn't know and I was young, but um, we never saw homeless people down there. And then when I moved to Anchorage and I got married, I, it was a shock to see, and there, there's so many of them that are, they're Alaska native. Mm -hmm. And for me, that, that calling, that, that desire that's there, it's still a goal. I just don't know how to do it, but it's so deeply personal that that comes from my own history of what my family has witnessed and, um, you know, hearing my, my biological father choose with his words, alcohol over his children. Like I 
can still smell Seward whenever I, mm -hmm. whenever I think about that memory. Um, I was six, you know, and so knowing that, knowing what a problem alcoholism is, especially for Alaska Native people and the homelessness that's tied to it and our homeless people having the issues that they have because of the alcoholism and we're not, we can't separate them and just, we, there's so much more we need to do. Um, but me as one person and kind of shifting my, my guidance to education instead of, you know, maybe going into public health type stuff. There's so many backgrounds I think I could have done and being able to shift my focus into education will let me grab high school students and start structuring anything that is related to their future early on in the hopes to prevent them from following any path that might lead them down to that. And Shamai, I was curious, because you are currently in, you're not teaching in high schools right now, but you certainly have an educational role through your um, position as the ePortfolio strategist. Could you talk a little bit about what your, what your role is there and how you're currently supporting students and faculty members? Yeah, so actually, work, my job, I love my job, being ePortfolio strategist, which I wish I could actually better explain what ePortfolio <laughs> strategist means, but being able to, to work with faculty and students, not just faculty. I do a lot of work with faculty, but before the pandemic, I loved going into the classroom and sitting down with students more than anything. That was always the best part. Um, but I do a lot of support with faculty right now in doing, actually my skills have grown so much. It's not just ePortfolio anymore. Um, the, the programs designs that are happening now are actually like they're, they want to use ePortfolio, but my skills go beyond ePortfolio. Mm -hmm. So where I've gotten this master's degree now, it's also like, but you can develop curriculum. Yes, I can. <laughs> so I do a lot more course design in the sense of um, how do we, integrate the portfolio but how do we also make it to where the students are seeing themselves mm -hmm. in some way um and not just through a template you know how do we introduce the portfolio in a way that brings more meaning to the the learning experience as the learning experience but also the learning experience as the student and drawing those connections to this isn't just another assignment that you're completing and you have to put in your e-portfolio. So I love talking to faculty that are open to how do we have the students ensure that they're seeing themselves in the work that they're producing, but also that they're seeing themselves in a way that connects the work to have more meaning than just another assignment mm -hmm. that was completed. And so um, working with students, it's wonderful because I'll have them reach out to me with like, Hey, I'm having trouble with my, my e-portfolio. What can I do? And we'll sit down and we'll talk and then we'll start talking about content and um, some of the concerns that they have about like, well, how do I present myself? Present yourself as you, you know, um, you'd be mindful of course, because you're in a digital space, but how do you want to present yourself and helping students become comfortable in who they are to be able to be in the e-portfolio and be creative in a way that goes beyond just completing assignments is, is just the best thing. That, that's the, my favorite thing about e-portfolio is talking about, it's not just the tool, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so much more. And diving into what completing the e-portfolio does to you as a person when you really just, just embrace it and you let go of all of the, it's just another assignment. Yeah. And have you, I imagine through your years doing this, how many years have you been doing that now, Shamai? Let's see, I started in 2017. So. Okay. That's what I, five years. That's what I was it's thinking. Really I was years. thinking, I think it's been about five years. <laughs> Time flies. 
Um, I did not even realize. Yeah. So it's just kind of curious. Incredible. It is. It is incredible. So, you know, through those five years, I was just kind of curious, uh, and you could speak to this in the work that you do with faculty or students and how you maybe have seen some of the um, questions or things that people are trying to accomplish with the e-portfolios. Have you seen that evolve at all over those five years? So one of the biggest things that I got to see that happen with was when I started working with um, the new director at Native Student Services, and she was revamping the Native Early Transition Program. Mm. And she became like a mentor, which was wonderful, but she embraced the portfolio in a way that was, I trust you. Like she put her trust in me and then we developed a program portfolio that was an immersive student experience for that very first semester coming into the university. And um, it, it became this tool for the students to see their progress in a way that other programs haven't really used it that I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of kind of like the cultural identity project, but, a, but for, for, you know, your first year experience. And that mentoring that the students were doing in term in within their class and the cohort model that they built and to use the portfolio and see the port see the students come to this uh, this this new idea of who they are as students because when they come into the classroom for that first week you, you can really see how just nervous and scared they are mm -hmm. and then as they were progressing through the portfolio process and through their learning in that semester, you could just see all the improvements in their portfolio. I actually had a student from that cohort come talk to, I taught the class last semester for a part of the semester. And um, she came and talked to the class and she was raving about ePortfolio. She still updates it and everything. And all I could think was, this is exactly, this is what we need for our programs. This is why we do this. Um, and she still continues to use it today, which is wonderful. I wish I could say the same for Net, but you know, <laughs> the, the problem we have is the problem we're having is that our program structures are starting to change mm -hmm. because of COVID. Yeah. So um, where we're trying, where we have some faculty and staff are shifting into co to portfolio spaces because of COVID, some are shifting out of it because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but I, but there are other departments that I'm working with that are trying to use it to improve their staff experiences, mm -hmm. which I think is a wonderful idea. I never thought of how we could use digication, especially with how you can structure it to have multiple por portfolios in one department that serve various different purposes from staff resources to student resources to the actual student program that they're going through for showcase. Right, right. And then connecting all three of them together so that the staff are just able to, it's all right there. Wow, that's exciting to hear. I'm, I'm grateful that they have you there to help that project kind of get built because you've been through the process of helping so many other programs kind of put the pieces together that they want to achieve. Um, I hope we can stay in touch on on that too as it starts to, to roll out. Are there faculty that are already using the resources right now or is it in the kind of beginning stages? It's in the beginning stages right now. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, um, you mentioned in uh, your portfolio that there were a number of um, English teachers that you had that were kind of your biggest champions on your way through school and 
um, I think one of them had said something that they're looking forward to you publishing a book. And I wanted to put you on the, the spot today because, I mean, I look forward to that too. <laughs> but I wanted to put you on the spot today and just kind of ask, you know, if you were going to sit down and start, you know, writing a book today, what, what the topic or theme of that book might be, or if, you know, you just were thinking about what some of the chapters of a future book might be. I think if I were to write today, it would definitely be focused on student success. It would be research. It, it wouldn't be what my English teacher ever imagined for me. Um, that said, I did start drafting a novel a few years ago. It's never going to get finished. But um, writing has always been the. It, it's been an. Ex, it's been the only way I can express myself without feeling questioned. Mm. Um, it lets me get the things out that are really difficult for me to say otherwise. But as much as I love writing poetry and stories and, and things like that, and, and I know I have the creative mind to probably sit down and write a book if I really, really wanted to, having done research for so many years now, like that seems like where my writing always should have gone toward the direction of. Mm -hmm. And nobody really fostered that in high school. But I also didn't really go into a research direction in high school. We were writing we were writing stories yeah. and poetry. Um, that was very intentional for me. That was what I loved. And now I love research and I want to, I'd love to write a book related to student success and using technology and all the things we need to consider. Um, it was part of why I wanted to go for my PhD until I just I couldn't because there's just so much. And you know, I have a three-year-old that I want to spend time with and not have five more years of education <laughs> take away from me. Um, but I think that being able to, like knowing I have a strong research background now, I can write a book without getting a PhD. And while the dissertation would have helped that process maybe a little bit more, um, I think partnerships that I'll be able to create mm -hmm. and, and, and hopefully, you know, start in the future will make, will make something like that a lot more possible to, to put out, you know, either chapters or something like that for, for knowledge sharing. That's wonderful. Well, Shamai, thank you so much for your time today. It was wonderful to have a chance to connect with you and, learn more about your story. And I hope we can stay in touch as some of your new efforts are underway. And it sounds like there might be some shifts in your path. So I hope we can stay in touch about that too, as you move forward. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Take good care, Shmai. Digication Scholars Conversations is brought to you by Digication, a technology platform powering the most innovative ePortfolio programs in K-12 and higher education. Our website can be found at digication.com. This episode was produced by Drew Albanicius and Kelly Driscoll. If you enjoyed today's conversation, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thanks for watching.